All right, everybody, Hi, Lord Tamerlane, doing as usual, obscurities in miniature. And today, while I was coal-marrying my way through my garage, we came across some of the Warlord figures for Terminator Genesis. These are the Resistance Fighters, and these are the Terminators. So, I have no clue how the game fared. It didn't seem to be that big of a hit. It seemed like an interesting rule set, lots of different dice, and a river horse produced it, and I've always liked a lot of the rule sets that uh, Eliso Calvatore has made, but we just never got around to it, and so I ended up flipping the game or trading it or something. I, I think I swapped it for some Infinity figures, but somehow or another I ended up with a couple sprues left over, and I figured, you know what, what the hey, why don't I finally just put them together and see what the deal is. So, I know Warlord tends to have pretty big sprue blowouts, Quite regular, at least two or three times a year, it seems. And I know I've seen these guys on there before because I picked some up for some friends. So, uh, yeah, they're made for Terminator Genesis, which came and went. But they also are pretty good, just generic, near-future, modern-looking resistance fighters. I mean, you could probably get away with using them in a game of, you know, like some kind of modern game like Black Ops from Osprey or Red Ops 5, if you want to shoot up some zombies, heck, use them in Zombicide, use them in any of uh, Warlord's other games like World War Z, which came and went just as quickly, it seemed, using the old War Games factory figures. So, you have four basic bodies, and I know the original box had a couple of just repeated sprues of this. I don't think there's any other plastics for the humans. Now, I know that there were plenty of metals made, and they made, like, Kyle Reese and everything like that. Um... But we're more interested in the plastics right now. So it looks like we've got one heavy weapon rocket launcher. We've got a commander's hand pointing. And it looks like the rest of the figures are all... Nope. Okay. I was going to say they're all carrying submachine guns or something. This guy clearly has a shotgun. Oh, this looks like some kind of a laser weapon or something right here. Um, what that is? Maybe a grenade launcher or something? I don't know. You know, honestly, you could probably get away with just using these as any generic you know, near future sci-fi weapon. So interestingly enough, all the bodies are labeled ABC. And then you'll notice on the weapons themselves are all ABC, 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 ABC. And then you have a choice for hero in D. I'm assuming is D the female of the bunch? Possibly. I don't know. I can't tell. She has breasts. I guess she does. Anyway, she has the choice of either it looks like the shotgun or whatever the submachine gun rifle is. So she's getting the shotgun. Let's take a look real quick at the Terminators themselves. So the Terminator sprue consists of two guys per sprue, and they're not very exciting, but they are molded in shiny silver, so I guess, you know, give them a quick wash and you're basically done. You've got the legs attached to the hips, and then you connect these torsos right here. So the plug for the spine is going to sticks in. And they're all having the same weapons. I want to say there were some metal ones as well. Maybe they had other weapons, and I just don't remember. And then you have one crawling, never give up, just do it type uh, endoskeleton there. So let me grab some clippers. We'll put these guys together, and we'll see how they stack up. So we got everybody built here. Why don't we take a closer look? So our endoskeletons, I got to give credit, I guess, to Warlord for at least bothering to make them. But they're kind of plain and generic. I mean, he's got... There's only the two poses. And, you know, it's just they're, they're waving their guns left and right. And, like, they just don't care. And that's about it. Uh, I gotta say, they're very static poses. But, you know, I know they're... What is it? T-100s? T-500s? I don't remember the right designation. But anyway, the endoskeletons, you know, they're very stiff and static anyway. So I guess that's appropriate. Um, the resistance fighters, they're kind of just plainly posed, so I built it with the shotgun. It was kind of hard getting their hands lined up, surprisingly. And it wasn't because they were the two arms, it was like the posts that they were supposed to connect with just did not want to match up. So my rocket launching guy, I think that's the right pose. Obviously they need a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to need to drill that and clean that off. But, you know, they're not bad, I guess. I don't know why, but this is reminding me of some of the guys from... It reminds me of like a Mantic Sculpt. But, you know, Mantic Sculpts tend to also be more multi pose as well. And here's my commander-type dude. So, 
You know, for what Warlord's been asking on their sales for these, I think they were like a dollar or so for each sprue last time they had a sale. I mean, you can't really beat that. But, you know, I don't know what you're going to do with them necessarily either. The humans, at least, the resistance fighters, I mean, they're a lot more appropriately scaled to fight with the Games Workshop stuff. But, you know, I think they work pretty good for if you're going to do like a 28 millimeter insurgent type near future uh, flying lead or whatever else I'd said earlier. I mean, they'd obviously fit in pretty well if you were going to use them for like some kind of a post-apocalyptic zombie game. So, I mean, if you're into the plastics and you don't mind a little bit of work, and especially to make them a little bit more creative, I mean, you could probably get really busy and start swapping out weapons and parts with the GW stuff. I would be afraid that the heads and arms might be a little too big, but the War Games Factory stuff might work a little bit better. So, for the money involved, if you can get them cheap, I'd say they're probably worth it. If you were seeing it for full price, I'd probably wait. But they are a nice little footnote in the tabletop gaming history of what's been happening lately. So with that said, keep your eyes peeled for them. If you see them cheap, they'll send them to me then. <laughs> it's been Hyler Tamerlane with his Obscurities and Miniatures saying, see you later. Thanks for watching.